Welcome to Agco Aviation. I've always said I should have been a bird. I've dreamed of flying ever since I was a kid. I've drawn several designs of aircraft as a kid, but never really thought it was possible. I joined the Air Force shortly out of high school and became a flight crew member as a loadmaster on the Hercules C-130. I loved every minute in the air. I even started building and designing radio-controlled airplanes but my ultimate desire was to fly. As with so many, life got in the way, so to speak. My priorities were with raising my family. Once the kids were on their own, I started looking deeper into flying. Took several different intro flights in helicopters and fixed wings, but my true love is gyroplanes. My dad and I even went to Ron McKenzie's place in Searcy, Arkansas, and took lessons. I followed up with more lessons with Greg from Air Command in Caddo Mills, Texas. I even designed my own tractor style gyro. I built a quarter scale RC version and built it in X plane and it seems to fly very well. Maybe someday we'll get around to building it as well. While taking all those gyro lessons, I felt I still needed more general aviation learning, so I enrolled in a ground school in flying lessons at Mesquite Municipal Airport. I completed that course and took and passed my written exam. Now I felt a lot more confident in flying, especially when it comes to the rules and regs. One of my biggest hurdles with aviation in general is spending money. Didn't like renting planes, and I couldn't afford a gyro kit. So I've been waiting and looking. So when I finally decided to make the plunge, the most affordable way I saw was to build an ultralight kit. I almost decided to go with one of the World War I replicas from Aerodrome Airplanes in Holden, Missouri. Then I found Leonard Milholland, a great aircraft designer that's only 96 years young and still designing developing and flying his aircraft. Check out his website betterhalfvw.com for more information. Another great source of info was the Eagler's Nest and the Facebook groups page. Anyways, I wanted to start a YouTube series on my Legal Eagle XL ultralight build process. So here goes. On August 22nd, my wife and I went to Brookshire, Texas to meet Leonard and John. I bought the complete plan package from Leonard and the kit from John Bolding. On the edge of Leonard's airport is this really cool house. So Leonard showed me a rib jig he had. So I came home and built mine while waiting for John to get me my rib kit. I spent that time building my workbench, my first design of a rib jig, more on that in a minute, and spent some time making a game plan. Here are some planning forms I made in Excel. First I'd like to tell you, follow the plans. I didn't exactly. Leonard later told me it was fine how I did it, but I definitely made it a little harder on myself. Of course I still say plan ahead, or you may end up short on a couple of things. Anyways, Here's the first sheet I made from watching Leonard's video and reading the plans, making important notes as I went. Notice I was trying to plan ahead, like omitting gussets or cutting them for the compression ribs. I figured since I had time now, it'd be easier than trying to cut them out later. The next sheet showed all five of the gussets that I came up with. Notice. I had prefigured all the layout of the gussets. The next sheet shows where I anticipated cutting the rib pieces. My recommendation is to start cutting the longest cap strips first and you can use the remainder for the smaller pieces. Doing this should lead you to the least amount of waste. 
So I decided to go ahead and build my first rib jig. I took the full size rib pattern and laid it out on an old Formica covered workbench top. I used carbon paper and a stylus to copy the pattern to the Formica. Once done, I sprayed over it with clear coat to protect the markings. Then I added blocks to hold the cap strips in place. I also had a thick piece of plexiglass and I did the same for the nose rib jig. September 10th, John sent me my rib kit to get started. So I turned my attention to the gussets. I came up with five different gussets. I used an old paper cutter to make them pretty rapidly. I put a board on a 45 degree angle on the cutter. The first thing I decided was the height of each gusset and cut strips that wide. Then by just rotating the strips over and cutting and flipping over again and cutting, I had the triangle shaped gussets pretty quick. Needing nearly 800 gussets, this seemed to make a quick go of it. I think I had them all cut in one or two evenings and a little longer to sand them all. I kept them divided into their own plastic bowl until I needed them to build the ribs. Next, I took cap strips and pre-sanded them as a group and then began to cut them up. I picked out 26 of the best grain pieces for the tops and started cutting the longest pieces needed first, using the remainder for the next longest that it would fit. I did not steam the cap strip or pre-bend them and use Type Bond 3 to assemble and glue together. I won't bore you with the gluing and stapling of the gussets on the first side, waiting till the next day, taking it out of the jig, flipping it over, gluing and stapling second side gussets, and starting the next rib each and every night. I did this for the first week or so, but wasn't happy because of the wood splitting mainly. First off, I'd recommend, as will Leonard, to use a lightweight staple and not the T50 stapler I used if you decide to go with his way of rib building. So obviously I didn't care for stapling so I had to figure a new method so I changed my plan and built two more rib jigs. These were so much better in my opinion. So much when I build my next plane. I plan to build the same jig but out of plexiglass next time. With this method I can complete two ribs every night and don't even have to remove staples. Cool. It was as simple as laying out the cap strips, gluing top and bottom gussets in place, and clamping. I have 100 clothespins and 48 spring clamps. So far that seems to be enough. When you come back the next day to take them out of the jig, you're done, ready for sanding. So in about 10 to 14 days, I had all my ribs made and was out of work until John had my next package ready. So I decided to dig out my old Volkswagen engine stand, clean it up, put a fresh coat of paint on it, and new plywood and wheels. Then the issue of finding an engine. I finally found a long block from Don's bug barn. Boy was it a mess. Finally got it disassembled and need to start a rebuild process soon. Then John called Thanksgiving week and said my next bundle would be ready to come pick up. What a great Thanksgiving gift to me. So my wife and I went Saturday to pick it up and go see Leonard's freshly re-insulated hangar and his newest design. He took Legal Eagle number one and made folding wings for it. Guys, he's working on those plans now. I told him from the start I have no hangar space available at our local airport so I will have to fold my wings. I am so happy to see the Legal Eagle folded. Which brings me to where I am on my build, the spars. I did what Leonard recommends by placing a 1x2 across the front of the workbench. Marked off the top and bottom spar caps every 15 inches, then dry fitted all pieces before gluing and clamping. With one down, I have three more to go, and then wing assembly. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know there are so many how-to videos online, 
So I just wanted to show a recap and maybe a few lessons learned along the way as I build my Legal Eagle XL. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you'll click the bell notification, you'll get a notice every time I upload another video. Thanks, happy building, and be safe.